Hey everyone, Nick from Gallery 7. And in Ghent, Belgium, there is a piece that's considered a masterpiece by a painter named Jan van Eyck. It is 12 panels, it's huge. And our client, uh, Dominique, for a thesis at Mass Art, did a copy of one of the panels. And this is it framed. Um, she worked over six months on it. Um, she did it during the pandemic. It's painted on a panel that came off the back of an old bureau. I love that. Artists have always worked with what they had access to. And she put her heart and soul into this job. And I could tell how meaningful this was to her and what a great accomplishment this is. And sometimes a job comes in and you do everything as carefully as you can. But sometimes the job comes in and the piece means so much to the client that as the framer, you find you put your heart and soul into the piece as well. Um, I really think she's going to love this when she sees it. So what follows is a video of what was involved in framing this. And I think it's really interesting and you will learn something about how to frame a, a panel and how to build a strain or a cradle to support the panel. Um, so watch the upcoming video and I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. So I'm yeah. just trying to go park my car. Yeah. Um, and I'll be right back, okay? Yeah, okay, sure, yeah. Well, that's contemporary Luan. Okay. This is gorgeous. Thank you. Wow. It's quite an accomplishment. Thank you. So this is for your master's thesis? Yeah, it's for my thesis. Oh my um, God. So... So you, first, you, you you want this put on a strainer. I do, yeah. Right, and like we said, we'll use a hide glue because it's reversible. Right. Um, and then you want to put a frame on. Yes. Okay, what were you thinking for a frame? You know, I was hoping to just kind of see some options. Sure. I just, oh my goodness, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be hard. Yeah. That's very museum-y. Yeah. Right, yeah. I'm thinking that I definitely would like to go with a more ornate frame right. to, 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 to just accent the, 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 the trim. So this wouldn't be ornate enough. Yeah. I think you want to be in what we're looking at here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's just because, I mean, so I had hand cut a stencil for this background and oh. like with mylar and then I did one with thurlar and then, um, it wasn't working very well. It kept, I felt like it kept spreading. So I ended up hand painting a lot of these. And so I kind of want to get like this pattern, this motif kind of very ornate, kind of almost floral, um, leafy kind of pattern in there. Um, which is, I mean, I'm like, and if we don't have, if we don't have here. something you like, yeah. absolutely go somewhere else here. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to put a lot into this. So I've had people, like, the reason why I, I'm really um, wanting to go with you guys is I, yeah. I left calls for about 10 places. Um, and then about, they all got back to me, but they're all quoting me 5000 3000 Well, and were they like, talking about getting a, 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 a truly gilded frame? No. Like they were talking about because the size of the piece was so abnormal. Like they were it's saying, not abnormal. I mean, they were just saying that because it was so long and not like they were saying it was long and not not wide enough. It was not an what? average. Like they were making it up. They were literally saying because it was a strange shape. Um, I was like, well, it's it's made to size. It's, it's literally all, the exact measurements. And you, know, like, you custom cut every frame anyway. It doesn't matter. Yeah. If you want a three, I think you need a three quarter inch strain, three quarter inches thick. Yeah. And it will be popular, put down with high skin glue. So the strainer's going to make this deeper than the rabbit. That's fine. So we can do a build out, which costs more, or I can just put clips on it. I'd rather do a build out, but so. Um, okay. Yeah. So two ways to do a build out. Get you he likes to go with this kind of a color or a dark brown, not trying to match the gold. Sure. So we'll bevel it mm -hmm. um, 
So that's one way. What some museums do is they just do a build out like this. So they're not sort of to your eye trying to fill in the space of this against mm. the wall. So then the frame kind of floats out. Okay. Do you have a preference? Oh man, that's tricky. Um, I think this looks better. Okay. Yeah, I mean like then it's not casting a shadow on the wall or right. anything because right. the, the lighting is graded, right? So it's going to yeah. cast a, a shadow. Yeah, and I think what we'll do is I think for this, I think we'll go like sort of a dark antique-ish brown. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, we are working on uh, Dominique's painting, and we started the video by showing you the whole painting, uh, all frames, so now we're going to kind of show you some of what goes into making this happen. We're not showing all the carpentry details, but just to kind of fill you in, when the painting goes together, when it gets in the frame, the painting is going to be attached to this and I'll talk about that in a moment and this goes into the frame and the problem is of course that the frame itself is not deep enough this would be sticking out behind the frame you see that's sticking out the back of the frame so this is called the build out and what I've done is taken two pieces of poplar glued and clamped them together to make it nice and thick. Then I cut it on the table saw to about an 18% angle, so it angles in a little bit. And then it gets screwed into the frame. So this is the build out, and this gives us enough room to have this sticking up. And now I'm painting it, and the I use a latex paint, which is fine. It takes about four coats to get a really nice finish. And for me, the key is, of course, just paint it, sand it, paint it, sand it. Um, the key is to have really thin paint. And you put, in a you put on a lot of really thin coats, and that gives you a beautiful, smooth finish. So, because this is not too exciting, I'm not gonna have you look at all of this. Uh, in a little while, I'll talk about how we are attaching that beautiful painting, which is on a wooden panel, down to the strainer. So the painting we're framing for Dominique is on a panel. Um, and panels can crack, especially old fashioned panels, but this one's on a modern Luan or very thin plywood panel. And here's why they tend not to crack. If we take a look at this. So these represent the wood grain. So if this was a piece of wood, the grain's running this way. And the wood will expand and contract at right angles to the grain. And that's usually when you start to get cracks. So what makes wood crack isn't if it's held stable. It's if it's not allowed to it's sort of breathing in moisture. Think of it this way, it's sort of breathing in moisture from the air and then it expands. The moisture leaves it when it gets drier and it shrinks a little bit. If this is held captive, as it expands, it will start to bow up and then it wants to shrink out again, but it's still captive here and then it goes down and that's what causes old wood panels to crack. There's a furniture restorer I love to watch, uh, Thomas, uh, Johnson up in Maine and oftentimes he's fixing a crack on the top of an old table or bureau and he'll say the reason it cracked is it was glue it was a uh, screwed or nailed all the way around it wasn't allowed to expand and contract so we're going to treat her panel as if that could happen and it could even though it is a plywood but let's talk about how plywood is made plywood meaning plies thin sheets of something so plywood's made where the grain's running this way, and then they take another piece of thin piece of wood and put it this way with the grain running this way. Then they take another one with the grain running the other way and so on. And then the whole thing is clamped together and glued under very high pressure. So this piece wants to expand this way. This one wants to go this way. And all those forces counteract each other. 
So a contemporary quarter inch Luan plywood type panel is very stable. But still, I'm going to treat this as if it isn't. And there's a couple of reasons. One, what we could do, this is going to represent the painting. I'm not going to be throwing the painting around while I show you this. Imagine I put glue all the way around this strainer. This is what we're gluing or attaching the board to. So now I've got glue everywhere. Now I put this down. And what I would then have to do is clamp it down. And I would have to make sure it gets clamped in the middle. Hold on one second, I'm gonna go get something. So I can't just clamp it here and here because the center wouldn't be clamped. And then it would be free to maybe bow up in the center a little bit. So then you have to put a, what's called a call across it like this piece of wood. Pretend this is the painting now, people. Now you see why I don't want to do this. And so now we'd have to clamp it here and this is going to clamp it all the way across. I don't want to clamp something on the painting. I don't want to squish anything on the painting. I want the painting to be able to expand and contract. Also, this is poplar. And this is going to want to expand and contract at a different rate than the panel. So what all this means is we want the panel to be able to move a little bit independently of this. So here's what I've come up with. Let me go grab something. So now remember, this is the back of the painting. This is a strainer. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to glue some blocks onto the strainer. This is too high. This is just to show you. Glue some blocks onto the, sorry, onto the painting and then screw into the strainer from here. And there'll be a block here, a block here, and there'll be several blocks along these. And the key to this is that the blocks will have a hole drilled in them for the screw to go through. So the screw is going to go through this block into the strainer. The hole will be a little bit bigger than the screw. So imagine now this is glued to the back of the painting. The screw goes through here, but this hole is bigger than the screw. If something moves, if the painting moves, if this expands and contracts, this can move a little bit. So it's not like bolted down tight to it. So, one more problem to sort of think about. Usually when you glue something, you glue it and clamp it. Again, I don't want to put a clamp on the face of that beautiful painting, which uh, Dominique works so hard on. We're using a hide glue made from uh, animal, uh, it's basically like made from gelatin type material from animals. And it's great stuff, it's reversible, a conservator can take it off in the future. So I don't want to have to clamp this. So I said, all right, I took a piece of Luan. I took a block of poplar and I glued it to the Luan without clamping it. In other words, put glue on it, put it down. These weights are very light, just that. And so the question is, Will this hold without being clamped? Let's see. It held so well, the wood came apart. This didn't come off the wood. The wood actually came apart. So I'm very comfortable now gluing a series of blocks down onto here with oversized holes. Everything can expand and contract as it wants. In the future, if a conservator wants to take the painting off of the strainer. If it was glued everywhere, you could do it, but that would be a big job. You would unscrew these screws, the strainer comes off, and you would simply have a series of small blocks to take off of the panel. I know this seems like a long way around, it's a lot to explain, but um, I think we'll show you some more as I get these blocks made. And uh, this has been a lot of fun, we'll show you more later. All right, all the little blocks have been cut. 
And I had one more final little detail to add. If you look here, I hope you can see that in the video. It may look like tape, but it's not. This is a piece of release paper. It's a silicone coated paper that nothing will stick to. When I put glue on the back of the block and push it down, I don't want the squeeze out from the glue to get on this or on this. I don't want the block glued to this in any way. So this will keep the block from sticking to any of the strainer back. So let's see if we can do this without bumping anything. So imagine these have all been screwed in and a conservator wants to take the panel off or for some reason Dominique wants to take the panel off in the future. You undo these screws and the whole panel will lift right off or the whole strainer will lift right off the panel and it's now free from the panel. Okay guys, more coming later. And listen, while I'm standing here with my awesome strainer back that I really love, this has been a really great project. Um, please like and subscribe to our channel. We need more viewers. Um, so please hit, hit the like button, give us a thumbs up and comments. We love comments. So please comment, subscribe and enjoy. All right, we are making progress. All the little blocks have been glued down. This is the panel that the painting is on. And remember we talked about how important it is that the whole painting not be bonded or completely clamped and glued to the, uh, to the strainer. We want things to be able to move. And just to reiterate, the glue on here is called hide glue. It's made from animal byproducts. It's water soluble, easily reversible, and conservators love it. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, a little bit of a roadblock. Remember we talked about everything has to have room to move. And if you look at these blocks I made, we can look at this block over here, we can come over to this side. And my feeling is that they were too tight against here. It didn't leave wiggle room this way. See that? That's what I want. So that if this expands or that expands, it's got a little room to move. So what I've had to do is come along and rather crudely, you can just see this is coming apart nicely now, crudely chisel a little indent on all of those so that when it goes together, it's got some wiggle room. And I think just to do this side is good because there's just a little leeway now. It just slides in nice and easily. Uh, next thing, I have to do some chiseling on these and we will be ready to screw these blocks onto the strainer and then it's gonna go into the frame. So that's the space I chiseled out on all of these blocks for a little more breathing room. And I'm just gonna squeeze this for a second and you see the scap close up here? We don't want to do that because I don't want to tilt the panel this way. So when I put the screw in, I just do it tight enough for, for it to hold in place, but I do not want to tighten to the point where this starts to pull into there. Now, there's space between here and here. The screw hole's bigger. Everything can breathe and move. Finally, I'm ready to put the panel, the painting into the frame. This is a felt rabbit liner that protects the painting from the wood of the frame. Again, this also creates a little more cushioning, you know, so things can expand and contract. It's resting up against a nice soft thing. I'm gonna go get the painting and we're gonna drop it in. Okay, here we go. Boy, that fits nicely. I made the frame a little bigger, the opening of the frame a little bigger than normal. This frame has a big lip and again, nothing is jammed in tight anywhere. So the next step is, these offset clips, which you won't see, 
are gonna go right here. And you'll notice the offset clip is a little too high, and I want that. I have some black foam padding that's gonna go between the clip and this, again, allowing for things to breathe a little bit. All right, we'll show you some of that when we get to All it. All right, it came up with something like better than the foam pads. This is felt, which is going to just allow a little breathing space as this clamps this down. All right. He's just trying to film it so, you know, she can stop By the way, yeah. we say this for the store because we had it hanging over there. Oh my gosh. Keeper. Really? Yeah. Oh. oh my God. Wow. It is so beautiful. <laughs> it really it is. It looks so good. That is so crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh. Now, Thank wait you. till you see the job I did on the oh cradle. God. Yeah? In the video, I made the cradle as if it was on an old-fashioned panel. Uh-huh. You know, like it had to move and it could crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till you see this thing. Oh my gosh, wow. That's a work of art in itself. So the way it works is these are glued onto this. Mm -hmm. They're not glued onto this. Okay. So this panel expands and contracts mm -hmm. these can move against this okay right and i had the whole thing i had the whole thing built i put this over and realized if you come over here that this was pushing against this too much mm -hmm. so i chiseled out little wow. i chiseled out all around this side and all up and down these so the whole thing can breathe and move. Yeah. Um, this is the most extensive cradle I've ever built. Wow. Well, and, thank uh, you. But, yeah. no, th listen, no, thank you for trusting us with this. It was a great project. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. How exciting. <laughs> and it can just um, lay flat in here. If I need to, I can put down the seat as well. Well, it was a bit last time, so there we go. It's a perfect yeah. fit. Okay. Hey, it was thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks. This is awesome. Thank you so thank much. Thank you.